Bhagavad Gita, text 4.12 Worldly people who desire material success perform sacrifice in worship of the gods. Surely, in this world, they quickly get results from such ritualistic acts. The vast majority of people are interested in material enjoyment. Thus they do not worship Krishna. In times gone by such people worshipped his agents, the gods. They attained their desired result quickly in comparison to how long it took for those interested in spiritual matters to attain a result. Material goals are much more common than spiritual ones, and in our times people seem to attain them without any type of worship at all. However, the principle of worship is not limited to the realm of religion. Gurus and gods abound in all spheres of social and political life. Kowtowing to the growing cooperate globalization wins elections, yet it imprints the victors themselves. We may resist such worship in pursuit of human dignity, but our highest prospect lies in realizing the dignity of the soul. We must answer to no one other than our own soul and God. And to do so, we must withdraw our patronage of the material ego itself, championing neither the rich nor the poor. This is the non-dual crown on which the devotee kneels in prayer. It is the drum he beats. It is the key in which he sings in praise of Krishna. Such devotees find freedom in dignity, in the act of being both an instrument and ingredient of worship, not merely participating in the act of worship while keeping themselves apart. The dignity of the soul is won at the cost of one's very self, a price many are not prepared to pay. Pure devotion is rarely attained, and thus people in general are less interested in this, even though the results of such devotion far exceeds that of any other course of action. Those Interested in spiritual life are rare, and devotees rarer still. Even so, Krishna has not neglected the masses. He suggests a God-centered socio-religious system that will help them gradually become free from material desire. This is a system in which people can strive to perform their God-given duty in life responsibly, without concern for the immediate result, knowing that the proper execution of one's ordained duty is itself a greater reward that will develop and eventually mature into spiritual realization. Krishna mentions this system next in the overall context of explaining the secret of impartiality and detachment in action, citing himself as an example. <laughs>